At this stage, um, no. Uh, yeah, look, he'll come in today and uh, we'll, we'll assess it. But from you know, from all reports, even from on, on Saturday, was that you know he walked out. He was pretty positive about it. So look, at this stage, I think it's just a rolled ankle. But you'll get assessed by the medical staff today. Did you get enough of a just one game in and three quarters in before he hurt himself? Did you get enough of a? You happy with the mix between Lysett and Ryder playing where they play? Yeah, no, I think they work well together. Um, obviously, Paddy's had a slow start to his pre-season, so there's still some growth in terms of his match fitness, but um, I thought how they worked, with you know, they worked uh, in tandem really well, and they gave us a point of difference. Um, you know, we liked that look. Um, so, yeah, look, obviously, they'll build that connection as well and that synergy when they're in play as well. In terms of his match fitness, is there a push to play him this week, or is there a, a massive no-risk to positive him? Oh, look, if he's if he's right to go, I'm sure he'll want to play. Um, and we want to make sure that we keep putting um, our best players out there. And once again, for that for that simple reason, so that you know, him and Scotty are building a good relationship on field. So we'll get through get through his assessment and then uh, we'll make a decision at match committee on Wednesday. You know, it's obviously tying a line with someone like Paddy, who's so important but has <coughs> had to be wrapped in cotton wool so much because of various injuries. Yeah, look, obviously he's, he's one of your premier players. So you always got to make sure that they're right to go. And it's so early in the season. The season hasn't even really started yet. And um, we want to make sure that yeah, he plays the whole season. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we, uh, we make that right assessment on him and give him the best opportunity. What did you like from the weekend as a coaching group? Oh, look, I thought you know, we, we in patches, you know, we, our ball movement was strong, um, you know, with all the things that we worked on pre-season offensively and defensively and, and even stuff around the midfield. So I think we ticked a lot of boxes in a lot of areas. We were, we were pretty positive walking away from the game. Um, you know, and there's obviously, you know, we've got new players playing as well. So there was a lot to um, take out of the game. Do you like the work? Obviously, Jared, the younger draft teams <coughs> that look like they all, you know, took another step. Yeah, all three of them uh, were fantastic you know, in terms of how they approached the game. Obviously, it's a, it's a step up from the under-23s the week before, uh, but they all show glimpses of why we drafted them. Uh, but they obviously, they're just looking to learn, and um, you know, they're, they're fantastic young men that are, are all ears, and uh, we're giving them every opportunity to do that. Um, but they understand also they've got growth in their game as well. But, yeah, you've got to be excited about what we've seen. If they continue to push their case like that, <coughs> is there no reason why they can't all play round one together? Oh look, yeah. You know, there's there definitely no reason why they can't all play. Um, but you know, we've got another JLT game, um, more training before head around once. We don't look too far ahead, and uh, but you know, I'm sure they'll probably get another opportunity this week um, to uh, put their case forward. But you know, look, if they're performing and they're filling their role, well, there, there's no reason why they wouldn't be playing around. What did you, what did you like about Zach Butters' Butters game in particular, Joe? Oh, look, he's uh, obviously got a lot of the ball. Uh, look, he plays on instinct, uh, which is what we like. He's got that real creative flair about him. Um, he's compliant with his structure, and you can't question his attack on the footy for a guy of his size. Um, but, yeah, look, once again, you know, that creativity, you've got to harness a little bit. So he took a lot of boxes and a lot of areas, but also there's some areas that he needs to improve on um, and grow in as a young player. But you know, he's a young kid, 18 years of age, come out of under-18s. And he's stepping up the men, so there's still some growth there. That creativity sounds like something <coughs> we've heard mentioned a lot with Port Adelaide and the way you move the ball. And that's got to fit in perfectly, doesn't it, from a player who's 18 years old? Yeah, you, but you always got to harness the uh, the creativity as well. So it's uh, how far you go with it. But look, he, in terms of um, our approach to pre-season, we definitely uh, you know, want the players to play on instinct and give them a bit more freedom to do that. And yeah, look, yeah, there's no question he's one of those players. Jared, um, any senior players? I know it's early in the week, but <coughs> you're likely to get any others back this week? Too early to say. Look, we haven't obviously gone through match committee at the moment. Um, but look, you know, there's there's a couple of senior boys that uh, might be ready to go. But look, we've got some training sessions to get through first. Is Bronxy looking like he might be a chance, or is he maybe another week away? Well, I haven't seen him since uh, yeah. last Friday, so it's, it's hard to answer that one. But look, yeah, he's one of the obvious ones. Um, but yeah, look, once again, we'll get through training, and if he's right, I'm sure he'll put his hand up. We pick your best team available team this week. I think we would we'll, we'll like to like to do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but once again, that's that's for match committee as to uh, who we look at and you know, who who do we think's had a big preseason that we want to maybe explore with other players that played at the Magpies. Um, but once we get through training and match committee, we'll um, we'll make that call. Travis Boat played a lot up forward last year. Um, he was very good in the weekend. Is your plan 
as new midfield coach to get him back into the square more? Yeah, yeah, look, he's, he's, one, he's one of uh, a number of players that we, we want to throw through the midfield, but definitely, uh, you know, in, in my eyes, I would like to shift him more to midfield and going forward. So uh, that might swing that way a little bit, whereas obviously, as you said, previously he's probably played more as that half forward than pinch hitting in the midfield. Um, you know, we'd like to maybe look, uh, they would probably go the other way, play a bit more midfield and, and go forward. What's that, that just because of his experience? <clears throat> uh, well, obviously he's got great experience. Um, I just... Because I've said from day one, we want flexibility. I want players to have a point of difference. Um, you know, you can't question uh, his work ethic to get up and down the ground. He's got leg speed and his experience. Um, so you put all those things together, and it's what I want as a midfield coach. Jack Watts looked good in batches. Can you see him sort of playing more of a permanent role at halfback or in the wing? Yeah, well, the plan wasn't for him to play play halfback, um, but at the same time, it goes back to that flexibility that you know he came into play as a wing, and you know predominantly I'm I'm looking at him playing wing, and but at the same time, you know if he needs to fill a role across halfback, as he did on the weekend, um, he showed that he can play that, so he, he's definitely added added to his game there, and um, you know we'll look at that moving forward. Joe, sure, back to Bokey, does that does he two things? Is even going forward maybe give him a chance to play more midfield, a bit of a direct spot, and also is he, is he um, happy to, to go back in the midfield more now? He seems like he's playing with a fair bit of freedom. Yeah, he's definitely playing with freedom. Uh, he's, he's had a massive pre-season and he's, a, he's an ultimate professional. But uh, look, you know, Ebert will go into the midfield as well. Uh, they're just playing different roles within our forward line. Um, so I wouldn't say bokey in and Ebert out. It's nothing like that. Um, it's more just, once again, adding depth to our midfield. Um, and looking at that difference that we want in and around the ball. Um, so both those players will go on ball at the very stage. With the captaincy no longer on his shoulders, does he <laughs> obviously loved it and embraced it, but is he playing with a bit less of a load on his shoulders now? Oh, it's hard for me to answer that one because I haven't, I've only been here four months. Um, but look, you know, just not having the title doesn't mean he's a different person. Um, I think what I've seen firsthand is a guy that uh, wants to get every every bit out of himself. Um, obviously, he's getting to the back end of his career. Um, um, he's still got a lot of footy ahead of him, but uh, I think um, he still leads on the footy field. But I think being in around the midfield, I think maybe that looks like it maybe have freed him up a little bit. Um, but, yeah, look, he's a quality player and he's always going to be a leader. Do you have to do anything uh, differently recovery-wise, given how hot it was on the weekend? Yeah, I, I dare say there will be a lot more going into recovery. I dare say our minutes on, on the track will be a little bit shorter. Um, once again, we haven't had sort of first hand with the players just yet. They've been doing all their medical screenings and we'll see how they've pulled up. But yeah, we'll make those adjustments to make sure that we're right for the weekend. As you said, you haven't had a chance to really speak to them, but you know, getting back on the bus and coming back to Adelaide, did they look cooked or they're they all right to handle this sort of thing? Well, once again, I wasn't on the bus, so I drove back. But uh, look, look, we got through We got through really well. Um, yeah, they've been training in some really hot conditions over pre-season. We had extra players on the bench. We, we felt like we managed our minutes really well. Um, and they're professionals. You know, I'm sure they'll recover really well. It'll be and fine. Do you, and do you expect uh, uh, Polak and Pidon to potentially... Get some heat from the players and the supporters. <laughs> I don't know how fast the players are. No, I um, oh, look, it's it's hard for me to answer that one. Um, but it's you know, it's like any any player that leaves a club that you played a lot of footy at, you're probably going to get a warm welcome. I don't know, but um, look, the, the players have utmost respect for those players that have been here, and um, I'm sure uh, when they cross the white line, you know, they're, they're just playing hard football. But there won't be any there won't be any focus on them for sure. Scotty, um, Will and Drew was very good again on the weekend, especially with his clearance work. Mm. Is he, you know, another good game on the weekend against the Roos? Is he almost a lock for round one at this stage? Well, no players are lock for one, yeah. um, but. Uh, what we have seen is that you know he stepped up again. There's a guy that's missed two, nearly 12 months of football, played down the 23s, showed his showed his real talent, and his clean hands in tight. And he stepped up against again against a quality midfield and the Crowds brothers and Sloney and Yeomans. You know, like so, he's he's definitely putting his case forward. Um, and, but yeah, he's right in the mix, and you know, I'm sure he'll get another look this week. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, mate. Thanks. 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 Thanks.